Courtney, let's move on to a care plan um, or what we call in the long-term care insurance world, a plan of care. Can you give us some tips on what people should consider when establishing a care plan? Absolutely. So I have on my website a list called the caregiver checklist, where it's the first thing I think is the best place to start, where you figure out all the different professionals that need to be in your care group, care plan team, we call it. Mm -hmm. And that would need to be an attorney. It would need to be the power of attorney. Uh, financial advisor, insurance agent, doctors, therapist, pharmacist. You should have their information on how to contact them in case you have questions about their particular industry. And from there, then you need to start also thinking about the house that somebody's living in. If they plan to age in places, as we call it, is the house safe and is it going to be easily adaptable with time if there are certain things that need to change? As you said, with an old house, can you figure out how to widen doorways if you need to? Can you figure out to put in a downstairs bathroom if there isn't one or a higher toilet in the downstairs bathroom? Mm -hmm. Is there a ramp that's going to eventually need to be put in the front walkway to get to the front door? All those things, it's really great to just start thinking ahead of time. You don't have to do it, but it certainly will help in the end. It's better, as you know, the old adage, you bring an umbrella, it's not going to rain. So (laughs) wouldn't you rather just fix up your house and then not have to worry about it later on as opposed to scratch? Rambling, right. leaving the hospital, knowing that they are somebody's in a wheelchair and that they have 16 steps to get to their front door, those kinds of things. So yeah, having that in mind. And then, you know, talking with the physician about and the attorney with the older adult you're ha- helping, what are their wishes at end of life? We don't mm-hmm. want to admit it, but we can't live here forever. So right. we have to start thinking about, do we want to be on life support, as they call it? Do we want to be resuscitated if become unconscious and stop breathing? Do we want all of these different things to happen? Do we want a trach? Do we want to be fed through a tube? You know, those things need to start being talked about and thought about because in the end, it's your life and you should have a say in it. And it's also difficult for a loved one or a power of attorney to make the decision on your behalf. Oh, absolutely. You know, so having all of, there's so much when it comes to a care plan to think about. That's right. And I think you nailed it on the most important pieces. It's really, you know, those important people in your life, those professionals. And I love that you even said pharmacist. That's an individual that I wouldn't have thought about before in a care plan, but that would be really important because after all, they are filling your prescriptions. And if you have questions or you have new medications added and different medications can interact differently with each other. And so So you want to make sure you have a good relationship with your pharmacist or pharmacy so that you feel comfortable asking these questions and you're getting the expertise that you need. But having those professionals in your life and they're documented, you know, the contact information, their names, you know, address, phone number, emails, those types of things, really important for your family. I mean, at this point, you may not be able to contact them. So let's face it. This is really for your family. This is probably for your spouse, your partner, your adult kids, whoever in your life's, you know, important to you, your loved ones, they're probably going to be the ones that are making these phone calls and talking to these people. So you want to make sure that they have the correct information, the right contact information so that, you know, they're in the loop and they know what's going on as well as, you know, who's going to provide care. Something important to think about. Is that going to be a family member? Is that going to be a professional You know, is it going to be a home care agency? Have you looked at assisted living facilities in your area, continuing care retirement communities, CCRCs, a lot of different communities that are available if home care is not the best fit for you, but figuring out where do I want to receive care and then how are you going to pay for that? Right, Courtney? So yeah, just so much to think about. We don't realize it till it happens. And then you get overwhelmed and stressed. And that's Mm -hmm. when you feel like your plate is overflowing and, you know, starting to think ahead head really will just make so much easier in your life. Yes, we're going to reduce stress, reduce consequences physically, financially, mentally, and emotionally if we have these conversations now and we start to do this planning now so that it doesn't come down to the crisis. And at that point, your family is going to be scrambling because if you haven't had this conversation, you haven't done the planning, they're going to have to figure it out on the spot. And what are they going to do? Are they going to go to Google, you know, and, and, and research in the moment? And there's so many emotions. You're probably not going to make the best decision at that point when it's in a crisis. So doing this ahead of time, really important. Those are great, great tips for a care plan. 